Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at this awesome little kit from Clockwork Pi known as the Dev Term. Now this should be releasing really soon to everybody who's done a pre-order on this. And they actually plan to release a few different models with different CPU configurations. But this one here happens to be powered by the Raspberry Pi CM3. Now in my opinion, I really do think that this should have been upgraded to the Raspberry Pi CM4. But uh... This is what we have right now, and we're going to go ahead and put it together because it actually looks really, really awesome. This kit includes everything you need to get this up and running, except for batteries. It takes two 18650 batteries. I'm going to be using two 2000 milliamp hour batteries that I picked up on Amazon. And when searching for 18650 batteries, make sure you get a name brand. There's a lot of fakes out there, and I will leave a couple links in the description to some real batteries that you can pick up on Amazon. I've actually tested them in the past. They're made by LG and Sony. So yeah, this is a complete do-it-yourself kit, and it just snaps together. They do include two screws that are kind of optional. I personally didn't use them in my build, but uh, everything looks like it's manufactured really well. And as for the keyboard, this is a 63% keyboard made by Clockwork Pi, and it does have a trackball built in like the old Blackberries. It's actually really cool. When it comes to the screen, they didn't opt for a 4x3 or a 16x9 on the dev term. This is actually a 16x6 aspect ratio screen. It's a 6.8-inch IPS with a resolution of 12 80 by 480. The unit also supports HDMI out, so you can connect this to an external display. Alright, so let's go ahead and get this together. It's actually really simple. Like I mentioned, this basically all just snaps together, and this is going to be your main board. This is the carrier board for the CM3. And this can be upgraded down the road with a more powerful unit, but uh, I really do wish that they would have just went with a CM4 right out of the box. This also includes a fan to help keep that Raspberry Pi CM3 nice and cool. And when we're done with this, we'll actually have three USB outs. We'll also have USB Type-C and HDMI. Now it's time to move over to the power board. This is where we're going to place our 18650 cells. And if you don't have any 18650s, don't worry. These are accessible while this kits together and you can use it over USB power. But I've already got some batteries ready to go here. These are just 2000 milliamp hour batteries. And the power module board should slot right in here. It's got these little quick connects on that main board with the CM3 installed. Just make sure it's nice and secure. And now I have my power board installed in the unit. Another really cool thing that they've added to the dev term is an included thermal printer. This is a 58 millimeter thermal printer and it'll do 200 DPI. It'll go right in here. We also have an input tray to hold more paper. Now that the rear of the whole unit is built, we're just going to go ahead and lock these in place with the plastic locks that they include. They're going to push right down in here and just keep everything nice and tight inside of the unit. Once we have those in place, the rear half of the dev term is completed. We're actually ready to install the screen and the keyboard. So when installing the screen, you need to be extra careful. You don't want to crack it, you don't want to break it, and there are snap locks here, but I found that sliding it in place is definitely the way to go. You need to be very careful with it, so I'm going to kind of do this off camera, but you do not want to snap it down in place because we would have to bend the screen and we would risk cracking it. So what I did was just kind of slide it down in place, and unfortunately I didn't plug in my ribbon cable, but it's pretty easy to do it from the back side. You'll just have to remove the battery module. But once we have the screen in place, it's time to install the keyboard. There's four little pogo pins here, and it just snaps right into place. And you could actually use it just like this if you wanted to, and I would recommend at least booting it up one time like this just to make sure you have everything plugged in correctly. And once you're sure of that, we can go ahead and snap the back half and the front half of the case on. It's actually really easy to build. It's kind of like Legos. So just put the back half on. Just kind of sits right down in here. Just make sure everything's lined up. And now we can put the front half of the shell on. So this is going to snap right on. And we have these little lockers on the side. And once it's completed, it looks something like this. I think this thing turned out really nice. I love the design of it. Definitely looks super retro. And like we saw, this does have that thermal printer built in. And we also have this paper carrier. But unfortunately, I don't have any paper that would fit this just yet. We have two USB 2.0 ports over on the right hand side. Over on the left hand side, another USB 2.0, USB Type-C, micro HDMI out, and a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. And on the front here, we have our power slash reset button and our micro SD card slot. And here it is. I've got it booted up. I've installed a few things. 
Overall, I do like the design. I love the way it feels in the hand. It's really hard to type like this when you're holding it, you know, in landscape mode. You might want to set this down on the table. But the keyboard does work really well. Let me go ahead and get a bit closer here. Trackball is working right out of the box. I'm not sure if there's any sensitivity settings, but it is working pretty well. I was actually surprised at how nice it actually works. The dev term does have built-in stereo speakers. They are a bit tinny because they're using smaller speakers on the bottom, but uh, it gets you by. You can hear it if you want to play some music or a video. I'll just start up a game here. This is just something that's built into Raspberry Pi OS. I mean, overall, I really do like the setup here, but there's one major thing that's really holding this thing back. It's not the screen, it's not the keyboard, it's not the trackball, it's not the batteries. It's the Raspberry Pi CM3. We basically have a Raspberry Pi 3 in here, and since then, you know, we have the Raspberry Pi 4. The CM4 would have fit in here really nicely, but giving this thing a little extra power would have been really nice. The SD card that was provided with the kit did have Raspberry Pi OS on it, but, you know, if you were to install a much lighter operating system on this, like just a terminal operating system, that would definitely be the way to go with something like this. Go ahead and start up Chromium, and you know it does take a while to load up stuff on the Raspberry Pi CM3, and that's really the main drawback here. Here's a terminal. I'll just see if we need any updates real quick. I do have a keyboard plugged in and a mouse just to make it easier on myself. Just run a quick update, and I think I'm fully up to date here. When I was first booting this up, you know, it walked me through all of the steps, so it should be ready to go. Yeah, there we go. So we're fully up to date with Raspberry Pi OS. Let's close this down and head over to YouTube. Let's just see if we can get any video playback running on this thing. This does have AC Wi-Fi built in, and I am connected to my 5 gigahertz network. We'll head over to YouTube. And it does take a little while to load up these pages, especially pages with a lot of images on them, like YouTube homepage. If we head over to the Clockwork Pi website, we can see that they're going to be offering different modules for the dev term, and the highest end one has 4GB of RAM and what I'm assuming is the RK3399. That would definitely be a lot faster than the CM3 module we're using in this right now, and it would speed things up tremendously. I mean, just even web browsing, video playback, and everything would be much quicker on a more powerful unit. Alright, so I just skipped ahead a little bit so we could get into a little bit of video playback. It's still buffering a bit. We're at 480, and I think I can go full screen with this. Let's go ahead and try it. Finally, there we go. But yeah, I mean, even just trying to get to a point where I can play this video is taking a bit of time, and it really comes down to that CM3 being such a low-powered unit. But you know, once you get loaded up, it should be able to play through this video quite well. Uh, 480p should be doable on something like this. And yeah, I mean, it's actually running pretty decently. It just takes a while to load everything up. Another thing I wanted to test out real quick was a little bit of emulation, so I did install an older version of RetroArch. I figured we could at least test NES here. We do have some game controls built into the unit itself. We have a D-pad and four action buttons. I did map these for RetroArch, so we should be able to use them with this game. Let me navigate to where I have my ROM located. And there we go. We got some Adventure Island running on the dev term through RetroArch and Raspberry Pi OS on the Raspberry Pi CM3. Getting a couple sound glitches here and there, but I am using an older version of RetroArch. I want to go through and, you know, try to install a different operating system on this unit. I will be making another video, but I kind of wanted to give you a quick look at how it performs right now out of the box with Raspberry Pi OS. So overall, I do love the design of this. It's just really lacking in the power department, at least right now with that CM3. I did order some paper that'll fit this printer, and I will be making another video soon. I want to see if I can get a different operating system installed on this, but you know, I wish right out of the box they had their own operating system, a lighter version of Linux specifically designed for this, with the keyboard, screen, batteries, and you know, the overall form factor in mind, because running something like Raspberry Pi OS on a screen like this just doesn't work out very well. Now you could always go through and build your own distro, but the one thing I've been doing is just keeping an eye on the Clockwork Pi forum. I'm sure somebody's going to come up with something that just makes it 
a lot easier to run an operating system on this unit, especially with this screen size here. And a few users have already gotten their hands on the dev term. They've been working on keyboard firmware, and hopefully, if we keep an eye out, we'll see an operating system specifically designed for the dev term that takes advantage of everything it has to offer. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. I really appreciate you watching. I just wanted to give you the first look at the dev term. I do think it's pretty cool, but it does need a little work on the software side right now. If you're interested in learning more about this, I will leave links in the description to the Clockwork Pi website. And if you have any questions or you want to see anything else running on the dev term, just let me know in the comments below. But like always, thanks for watching.